Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be talking about sediment. So normally in these videos, I, I talk about the blocks and I talk about them in Minecraft. Um, and then I talk about the differences from real life materials. But for this episode, I kind of need to talk about what sediment is to begin with. So uh, we're going to go down to the display and start talking. So for geologists, uh, sediment is considered uh, bits of rock and mineral that aren't in place. So if you look at all this granite here, we would consider it in place. It's, it's connected to, the, uh, to other rocks. It's not like a big rock just sitting on top of dirt, even though you, you can't tell unless you, you know, go underneath it. But trust me, it's you know, just a big chunk of granite to, uh, attached here. So if we break that, or if a piece breaks off, then this piece is considered a piece of sediment. It can be um, washed down river, it can be affected by wind and, uh, and water, and it is not in place. It is a piece uh, that's separate. And this doesn't really have anything to do with the size of the material. You can have very large pieces. Uh, you can have very small pieces, which um, brings me over here. So this is a sediment uh, size scale. I'll uh, go through it, but it's why I picked the blocks that I did as sediment in Minecraft. Uh, as you can see, it starts with a uh, cobble, well, boulder, which is anything greater than anything greater. There's no upper cap. Uh, greater than 256 millimeters. This is a logarithmic uh, scale, by the way. Uh, but um, on the upper end it are cobble. So in um, geology, there isn't really a rock called cobblestone. Cobblestone usually refers to man-made um, things like uh, walkways or walls made from cobbles. And Cobbles are just small rocks, or, well, hand-sized rocks, or bigger, I guess, technically, uh, 64 to 256 uh, millimeters. But um, in uh, outside of geology, cobble is just a very generic uh, term. Uh, inside geology, it's just relating to size. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't relate to what the material actually is or anything like that. Like, you could have cobblestone of granite. You could have cobblestone of any rock. Um, but uh, as we go down in size, we get into the gravels. And in Minecraft, it's a little bit e more easier to understand that this is sediment because it's, you know, rocks, the things that are not affected by, or they are affected by gravity in Minecraft. And so you can see that they are loose bits. So this is just a smaller bits of rock. And smaller than that, once we get to uh, one to two millimeters and lower, then we start getting into sands. And uh, sand is something that a lot of people don't understand, I guess, where it comes from, which is part of why I, I, I made this. There's lots of different types of sand, but it's just as with cobble and gravel, this can be rocks, this can be tiny bits of shell, this can be uh, minerals. Uh, oftentimes we think of sand like this yellow color on beaches or in deserts. And um, usually the parts that make this up are uh, quartz uh, minerals. And um, we'll get into that in a, in a second. But uh, if we start getting down into sediments smaller than uh, 600 or 6 62.5 uh, microns, which uh, would be uh, 0 0.0625 millimeters. We start getting into the uh, silt, clay, and uh, colloid, colloids. Uh, very small particles, very, very tiny. So small that they actually stick together to each other uh, very well. Uh, and that might be why clay, you know, doesn't isn't affected by gravity in in Minecraft. But 
Uh, we're talking very, very small particles, like uh, colloidal uh, liquids here. Like uh, this is the size of like particles of fat in milk are like this size. Uh, very, very, very tiny uh, nanometers uh, across. So, so you might ask, like, where does all of this, uh, all this sediment come from? And like I was talking about earlier, it comes from other rocks. If we look at granite, uh, for example, here, uh, granite in Minecraft has these couple, uh, these pixels that are different shades. There's some lighter ones, there's some pink, there's some dark. In a real life, uh, granite is uh, comprised of uh, four major minerals. Uh, there's quartz and uh, two feldspar minerals, uh, plagioclase and orthoclase feldspar. And then um, and to a lesser extent, there's uh, some hornblende, which is like the darker minerals and stuff. But the... When these rocks undergo weathering, when they're out in nature, they start breaking up. And the quartz, you know, will break out, and the, the, the feldspar minerals, um, they are not very... They weather chemically. They don't just weather physically. So their chemical structure actually changes when they go undergo weathering. And so those actually break down into really small clay particles. And so you're left with the quartz minerals and then clay minerals. Um, but it takes a, a long time, which is why I made this uh, artificial weathering station for us here. So I'll put my granite in, I'll close it. It'll uh, add some water and pressure and grinding up. And there we go. I got some, uh, got some clay I got some quartz and I got some gravel, just broke it up uh, a little bit. So for our purposes here, uh, I made a little stream bed, kind of. Uh, some of this was here. I actually made this over a year ago and didn't really like how things were working and just kind of remade things and never really got back to it, but doing it now. So. In my simulated area here, we have granite that's underneath this waterfall, and so it's being subjected to a lot of um, a lot of erosion from from the, the water and everything. And so we will add our sediment down here, and there it's the granite is breaking up, and the sediment is washing downstream. And the gravel is a little bit bigger than, than things. And so when it comes around this turn, the water slows down and it can't keep all the gravel. Uh, some of the gravel falls to the bottom of the river here. You can see it collecting. And now we're down to the, back to the quartz. So the quartz is a little bit smaller. It'll make it further down the stream until we get down to down to here. There we go. There's the quartz coming out and it's uh, being rounded and washed and turning into sand. I have some clay coming down now. It's even smaller so it gets even further. It takes less energy to move. It can stay in the water when the water is moving very slowly. And then it's uh, settling out into the bottom of this little pond. And so this little uh, diorama, I guess you would want to call it here, you know, would this would take place over many, many miles. Um, but I just want to kind of show how like the different sediments would be sorted out. And that's why in rivers, well, in Minecraft, we have clay and we have uh, sand and we have gravel in rivers and in swamp biomes because that's where they, we find them in real life too. Uh, you have like sandbars and rivers, you have sand along the beaches. Um, deserts are, you know, a kind of a different thing. All the small clay particles from weathering, they actually get blown away. And you're left with all of the harder, uh, uh, more chemically strong minerals like uh, quartz and everything built up. But 
I'm going to talk about deserts and stuff in a, a different time, I think. But um, something else I, I wanted to talk about. So there, there's a whole uh, branch of geology called sedimentology. And um, if we look at old sediments, so after this, this is buried, and maybe this sand becomes sandstone, and uh, the clay uh, can become uh, claystone, uh, you can look at it and you can determine a lot about the environment that it was deposited in. And part of that, I made some maps over here, is from uh, grain size. So I don't have a scale bar on these, but these are individual grains of sand. And so, as you might expect, when it breaks out of a rock, it's going to have all these jagged edges on it. And as it travels down the stream, it hits and bumps up against other particles, and it becomes more and more rounded. And so, if we look at a, if we look at some sediment, and all of the pieces are jagged like this, we know that this sediment probably didn't travel very far before it was deposited. It didn't get time to get smooth. Or if we look at something and it's super smooth like this, we can we can we know that it traveled a good distance. And we can actually estimate uh, the source, like how far away the source was from rocks that are millions of years old and we have no idea, you know, where the river uh, or stream that carried that stuff actually was anymore. And uh, there, all, we all, there also is another measure I have uh, of a uh, sphericity, or how like a circle the object is. This goes into calculating, since this is more aerodynamic or hydrodynamic, I guess, than, than this, there's um, things that we can calculate as uh, sedimentologists and figure out uh, even more about uh, the sediment source and everything uh, from that. And I realized I probably went about going about this in the reverse order because we talked about granite and its minerals and how they break down. But um, I haven't talked about um, igneous rocks in this series yet. But uh, fear not. The next episode, I already have uh, some of it set up. I'm going to talk about igneous rocks and the differences and, and all of that stuff. I'm, gonna, I'm working on that at the same time we're working on a, a cave episode. Anyway, uh, I wanted to get this episode out. It's uh, like I said, it's been I've had this stuff built for quite a long time, and I just needed to get it done. But um, been slowed down a little bit with uh, getting these things out. Mostly, well, uh, well, because you know I have a uh, a new baby at home, and uh, my research at work is uh, going quite well, and so I've been quite busy with. Uh, work there and, and uh, some other things uh, in, at work, but uh, I'm still going through all this stuff and enjoying stuff, still doing stuff in the single player or the family multiplayer world, uh, the survival world, but uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll uh, see you the next time.